one set of questions I want you to do are the questions that involve cross products. So let me do those. Because um, uh, that's a question 5-2 and question 8-1. Those two questions um, uh, both involve cross product. And uh, so cross product is, I guess, one of those things where to, to a point, uh, if it's something that you are struggling with, you feel like it's uh, confusing and you don't get cross product, then I don't want to worry you because uh, we can get through this class five without understanding cross product. The number of topics that requires understanding of cross product, small enough, you can get through the class without understanding cross product. So <laughs> that's one perspective. And two, it's a... Uh, um, it's one of the things, if, especially if you're taking physics 4B, it'll come up again. And it's a physics concept that, and applying the right-hand rule, it's something that you will eventually have to understand. So, you know, why not now? <laughs> At least, you know, why not give an attempt now? So, so this is the first of those questions that I want you to do with cross product, uh, <laughs> or do as an illustration of cross product. So it asks, uh, what force must be applied to end of a rod? Okay, let me just draw the rod. I got some rod uh, along the x-axis. Uh, yeah, so rod is along the x-axis. Let me just say, this is my x-axis um, of some length in order to produce a torque on the rod about the origin. Okay, let me draw some of my axes. So I'm going to, so that was my X. So this is going to be my Y axis and my Z axis will be uh, like this. So let's see. So you de determine the direction of Z axis using cross product. So I'm having my hand. So this is the, how you do cross product. I recommend the whole hand version. Um, you orient your hand in the direction of first vector X, uh, which is going to right, your right. And then I orient my hand until I can curl it in the direction of the second vector, which is Y going upward. So, uh, so you know, I can curl my fingers from the rightward direction X hat to the upward direction Y hat, my right hand. And when I do that, my thumb is coming out of the screen. So um, the three-dimensional coordinate axis is defined so that X cross Y is equal to T. So the g-axis will be coming out of the board. So what they are saying is they want the torque um, about the origin to come out of the screen like this. So, and they're asking, oh, what should be the force? And uh, this is where uh, some practice with the cross product helps because this is the relationship you are using. Torque is given by cross product of the displacement vector this is the displacement vector and the force vector. So it would be easier if they gave us the force vector because they already gave us the displacement vector. If they give us the force vector and asked what is the torque, that would be easier because then I can just do a cross product with you know uh, my hands going in the direction of R and rotating until it's in the direction of F and do the cross product, that's the direction of torque. Um, because they gave us a torque, you have to do a little bit of a trial and error. So one thing as you are applying right hand rule, it'll remain the same, is the direction your hand is or originally pointed at. And the, uh, the only thing you do from there is rotating it to find the direction in which your finger also should curl so that your thumb, which points in the direction of torque, comes out in the positive g-axis. And it looks like the way it would work is if my hand is oriented this way, so my um, thumb is pointing out of the screen, in this orientation of the hand, I can do R cross F, and then the cross product is tau coming out of the board. So I can say my force, one of the possible directions for force will be upward direction. Now, it could be in other directions, but I have a sense they only gave us those yeah, choices, X, Y, and Z. So it should be in positive Y direction. And to get the amount of force, we uh, just uh, work through the magnitude formula. So uh, the 
magnitude of torque is magnitude of displacement times magnitude of force times sine of the angle between them. And since my only available choices were either zero degrees with this or 90 degrees, uh, in this particular case, this is going to be equal to one. So my force will simply be the amount of torque divided by the magnitude of the displacement vector. So 15 divided by 3.75. Yeah, and you see meters cancel out and you get Newton back. So four Newtons in that direction. So, so that's one question dealing with craft product. And uh, I guess, you know, this is a multiple choice. You could take a guess and uh, within four guesses be guaranteed to get it right. But uh, right hand row, it's a good tool to become familiar with this quickly. So it says, yeah. So let me um, sketch out the situation while I'm reading the question. So it looks like I uh, need to refer to some coordinate axis. So let me just to sketch the coordinate axis first. And it's talking about a particle traveling along a line. So. Um, if I have my x and y axis this way, line that has a constant value of y is a horizontal line. So this could be a line where y is equal to 4.1 meter. So it's saying there's a particle that's traveling along this line. Oh, wait, I wonder. it has a negative velocity, so let me draw it on this side going that way. So, okay. Um, so minus b, uh, yeah. Uh, let me just say, uh, let me say minus V, and my V will be positive value of 3.2. What is the angular momentum of the particle about the origin? Uh, okay, so note how the question didn't give an exact position of the particle. It gave us um, Y position, so that I can say, oh, that's a 4.1 meter. But the X position, it's a variable. It's just the left hand un unspoken. Uh, let's hope that it doesn't affect our answer. Uh, it's asking what is the angular momentum. So once we introduced cross product and so, you know, when we were initially talking about angular momentum, we used this shortcut expression, you know, angular momentum is rotation inertia times uh, angular velocity. This is done in analogy with the momentum equal to mv. Now, once we introduce cross product and properly state torque as being the cross product between the, the displacement vector and the force vector, then there's a way we can write or even define angular momentum in a way that uh, states uh, closer to the analogy, uh, specifically this analogy. In linear dynamics, we had this relationship. Force was defined as rate of change of momentum. And it, within the rotational dynamics, we have an analogous relationship with the torque and angular momentum. Torque is, uh, well, I guess it's not defined as, because it's defined as that. <laughs> torque is defined as this, and through that definition, it's equal to the rate of change of angular momentum. And once you have these two relationships, uh, you are kind of constrained in saying how angular momentum relates to momentum, and it's uh, this relationship. Angular momentum is equal to, or maybe even defined as, it's defined as the cross product of the displacement vector with a momentum vector. So you can get the momentum vector here easily enough from knowing the velocity and knowing the mass. We can say the momentum or minus of the momentum is equal to mass times the velocity of the particle. Um, and this is all in the y, I'm sorry, not y direction. This is all in the x direction. That's the only direction the particle is moving. And um, it's a displacement vector. It's a function of time. One thing you can say is that it has this constant value of uh, 4.1 meter for y. And the x value will be changing over time. 
<laughs> so let, let's see if, uh, if, if we apply this definition. Uh, it'll give us an answer where we don't need to know what this x is. Uh, by the way, there is an easier way to do it. Let me just uh, state, state it for the record. Um, you can use the concept of lever arm. And you can do angular momentum is lever arm times momentum. That'll work fine. Let me just use cross product here since I have it all written out. So we are doing this cross product between um, between the displacement vector. Oh, I think I can write it all out. So x, x hat plus the 4.1 meter y hat. That's my r vector. Cross product with the momentum vector, which is just a, a minus mv x hat. It only has x component. And there's a kind of an algebraic property that you are used to using with the product you are familiar with. And what I will tell you as a kind of a guarantee is that whenever we call a new operation a product, it's because the properties you are used to relying on still hold. Things like a distributive property, they still hold. A commutative property doesn't hold anymore, so don't use that. But distributive property still works. I can distribute these two terms into this product. I can do one cross product at a time. So I can do x times minus mv. And then for the vector portion, I can do x hat cross product with the x hat. Uh, that's going to be zero because they are parallel, sign of theta, theta is zero, so it's going to vanish. So I'm left with the second term, which I'll do. So 4.1 times minus mv. Uh, so 4.1 meter times minus mv. I'll plug in those numbers later. And what we have is y hat cross x hat. y hat cross x hat. And if you remembered that x hat cross y hat is equal to minus, not minus, is equal to g hat, and when you swap the order of cross product, you flip the sign, then this is minus g hat. Two minus signs cancel out. And we have 4.1 times mv in the g hat direction. But I'm pretty sure this unit, I would consider that unit to be wrong, uh, but that might be just my opinion. Uh, Joule, you shouldn't be using it unless you are dealing with the energy. But I think when it's momentum, it gets a little complicated. So <laughs> I'll leave that one alone. Um, so 4.1 times mass, uh, 0 0.2 times speed, uh, 3.2. I already handled the sign separately here, so um, yeah. And I guess, uh, I guess, uh, so, okay. <laughs> From your perspective, R cross B. So thumb is pointing out that is the direction of pot plus G. So I think that's right. Uh, yeah, and that's your only choice anyway. There's no choice of minus G. Uh, Two point six four. Um, the base gets I unit. So, okay, so that was the second question with uh, cross product. Uh, 